something that I've noticed is that unless people are willing to let go of their narrative self and allow that to be a component of their greater being, allow that to be a tool that the brain and the body use, you really can't make much progress. Again and again, I see people struggling inside of a narrative context, trying to fix things or make sense of things within a narrative without realizing that that's a tool that the brain is using. It's not you. You can encompass many, many different aspects of being and narratives are tools that the brain creates. They're simulations that the brain runs to try to make sense of things. If you're not willing to let go of the narrative identity, it's going to be really difficult for you to overcome addiction, to uh, make big changes in your life related to diet, related to relationships, etc. Because as long as you consider yourself to be your narrative identity, everything is going to be framed from that place as if it's your solid ground. And then the solid ground around you in the world and with other people is going to constantly conflict with what you think as solid ground from your point of view. And it's just a point inside of this narrative construct, which you have identified with. And the world is going to consistently bring information and data which goes against your foundational belief. And so are other people that are going to keep showing up in your life and you're going to have expectations of them because in your narrative, in your story of how other people should behave in your presence or in your relationships, they're going to have their own ideas. They're going to have their own habits, their own interests and desires and goals, and they're going to conflict. So in order to uh, move outside of that constant state of conflict with the world, with other people, and even with your own body, you've got to uh, allow yourself to be more than your narrative, than your self-concept. When I work with people, they're so used to being inside of their narrative identity, and they're so used to others working with them in that space, like psychotherapy is working within the narrative space, uh, that it's very, very hard to realize that that's just a useful point of view that your brain body is using to make sense of things. But it's not who you are. It's a tool that you use. And until you let that go, you're going to struggle. And you'll make sense of a lot of things, which many people do in psychotherapy, but that doesn't make it real. So when we exist inside of this narrative space, we have a couple different options. We can see our body and our lives and our relationships as adversaries. My body is working against me. The world is working against me. My relationships are working against me. So they're adversarial. Or we can be an advocate inside of that narrative space, which is essentially why the brain body adapted to have this mechanism. It's an advisor. So the brain can't really see or experience the world. It predicts what the world is like. And it figured out that using this conscious simulation, otherwise known as your narrative identity, it can model things. It can practice things in a virtual space and then go out into the world and see uh, if they work. But we've become so accustomed to living in these virtual spaces in our head that we stop seeing them as advisory and we see them as, no, that's me. That's who I really am. That's my true authentic self. The rest of me is a flesh suit or it's material, but this spiritual ethereal thing inside, that's me. No, that's just a simulation that your brain is running to try to figure out what's going on in the world. And it's there to advise you. So we can't get rid of our narrative space, but we can start to see it as an advocate. So it starts running simulations. It starts talking to you. It's ruminating. That's advice. That's not you. So you can say, hmm, I think that's good advice. I'm looking around at the world. I'm getting some new data, some new input. And I think that's relevant. Or... I'm looking at the world and I'm thinking, 
Yeah, that's relevant to a past that no longer exists. That's relevant to an environment and relationships and even a, a body or a skill set that's outdated. I have grown a great deal. I have moved. I'm in new relationships. So thank you for advising me, but I don't think that advice applies anymore. So I'm going to move on. I think it's really important that I emphasize again this idea that rather than trusting the world, we trust our narrative self-concept and how problematic this can be because it is no longer interacting with the world. It got a certain amount of updates. It downloaded the, enough databases to think I can now stand on my own. And then it goes out into the world with a very limited data set. And everywhere it goes, it tries to employ the same programs. It tries to engage in the same conversations and the same habits and same behaviors because it hasn't updated its databases. So when it interacts with anything different, it's going to fight and it's going to say this different thing is wrong. I am truth. I don't need updates. I'm perfect as I am. And when you have two people doing that, you get conflict, you get war, you get hatred, you get bigotry. So the goal of this work is to say, yeah, I have a self-concept, but I'm much, much more than that. Let me take in some new data. Let me absorb. Let me open. Let me allow my point of view to not be truth, but simply to be useful. So something to think about the next time you get into some kind of conflict with the world, with another person, or even with yourself.